What is going on, YouTube people? Neo Cards and Comics here for a little NBA talk today. I promised this at the end of the weekly sports card market update. We did not get to talk basketball at all, and it is a dumpster fire. Uh, we're going to dive into it, but overall, ultra modern to modern NBA, whatever you want to call it, not performing very well. Uh, it's not too surprising. We are in the playoffs right now. And I think one of really two of the biggest myths are this card is going to go up once the season starts is one. And then the other one, this guy's in the playoffs. His stuff's going to go up. We all know that's actually typically not how it works. It's usually the opposite, especially if it's someone trendy. We talk about it all the time, lofty expectations meet reality, they don't line up, and things go down. The players that haven't gotten a lot of hype, haven't gotten a lot of pump, they go up. And we're going to see that play out in today's video as well. And the downs are worse than the ups. So let's go ahead and dive into Market Movers. Link in the description down below. If you want a free 14-day trial, Check it out. There is a link down in the description. If you like it, cool. If you don't like it, cool. First up, let's dive into 2017 class. Tatum, Mitchell, Fox. I should give a little preamble here. I went back about 60 days on all these. For pretty much everything here, we went back to March 1st. It's a little over 60 days. Figured it would give a nice little lead up into the playoffs starting and whatever has happened in the playoffs to this point. As always, we are using Prism Silvers. They are not perfect. It is not a perfect overall market indicator, but it does a decent overall job in kind of giving us the macro level picture of how these players' cards are moving up and down. Usually the percentage swings on Prism Silvers will fall pretty closely in line with Opticalos, Select Silvers, other different parallels, Obviously, super limited numbered stuff and auto stuff is going to be a little bit different, but you don't have enough transactions on that stuff to actually get a good idea of what's going on. So that's the reason why we use Prism Silver. Someone usually always asks in the comments, uh, why are you using Prism Silver? Prism's garbage. That's why we use Prism Silvers. It is still a decent market indicator for how a player's cards are performing at a macro level. First up, Jason Tatum, still alive in the playoffs. Celtics, they should close out the 76ers. They're the more talented team, but they just seem to be a little all over the place. They cannot close out games to save their life. His Silver Prism PSA 10 down 35%. Ouch. One of the biggest drops uh, out of all the guys that we are going to look at, actually, which is a bit surprising considering uh, they are still alive and really should be the favorites in the East. No offense to the Knicks and Heat, but... The Celtics are the most talented team available in the Eastern Conference or left in the Eastern Conference. And if they can get past the 76ers, you would think they would cruise next round into the finals against whoever the West sends. So it's setting up on paper good for Tatum. Uh, we'll see what actually happens there. Next up, my boy Donovan Mitchell absolutely choked in the NBA playoffs, played terribly in most of those games. His PSA 10 Silver Prism down 15%. I'm actually surprised that is not a harder fall. So he's sitting at around $300. De'Aaron Fox, on the other hand, though now eliminated, had one of the better runs in the first round, kind of came out of the woodwork, put the Kings on the map finally, got a little bit of respect on him. He is one of the few that is up and up 35% on his Silver Prism, basically neck and neck with Donovan Mitchell. Very similar pop counts on Mitchell and Fox. Uh, Tatum has a little bit more on there. Not surprising. He is, he is the more expensive card. So probably more have been submitted. So those three guys off to a pretty rough start. Once again, especially considering Tatum is still actively alive. Now, maybe it was just that one sale that went off on five, seven for 800 bucks. Maybe the next one's right back in line at a thousand. And this looks better. That's always something to keep in mind. But those are the numbers as they are. 2018, 2019, welcome to the bloodbath. Morant, Zion, Luca, Trey. 
Let's start with 2019. First, Ja and Zion. Ja down 27%. Obviously, he had the whole gun thing and then promptly got kicked out of the playoffs. Uh, Grizzlies were busted up a little bit. No Adams, no Clark. Definitely hurt them. I actually think they win that series if those two guys are healthy. But And Dylan Brooks is going to be gone next year. That'll also be a nice addition by subtraction. Uh, that guy was an absolute head case. But Jaws stuff continues to pull back along with Zion's. Jot now slightly above Zion on the pricing comparison. I'm actually surprised it's not a wider gap. Zion was apparently fully recovered from his injury for the playoffs, but, or plan, but wasn't in shape is the rumor and didn't set foot on the court. He is down 36%. 2018, Luca. Obviously, we all know what happened there. His stuff continues to backslide. His Silver Prism PSA 10 is now under 1.3K, sitting at 1.27. The key question for me and for all of you, feel free to answer down below, does this card go below $1,000? Does a Luca Silver go below 1000 bucks? Here's the concern with Luca. Their off-season plan does not look great. Uh, it's keep Kyrie Irving. Mm, probably not the greatest thing in the world. Sign and trade Kyrie Irving. Probably not going to be much out there for that. Just let Kyrie Irving walk and free up some calorie, some salary cap space. But this NBA offseason, not spectacular. So I don't know that things are going to get a whole lot better down in Dallas. So we'll have to see what their offseason looks like. Maybe he gets a little bit of a juice if they make some big deal. But I just don't see what that deal is. So it'll be very intriguing to see if Luka continues to fall over the off season. I still believe in Luca long term. I think he's one of the best young players in the league, but I think there are roller coaster rides ahead in regards to his pricing. Trey Young and the Atlanta Hawks got a little feisty against the Celtics, but ultimately got bounced. His stuff is down 23%. His silver prism is now sitting at $200. He is selling less than De'Aaron Fox, less than Donovan Mitchell. Uh, less than Zion and Ja, which he's been there forever, but his stuff continues to go down. Narrative Street, not great on him. We'll see if Quinn Snyder can turn that team around with a full season and an off season with him under their leadership. And I would think that they are going to shake some things up in the off season. They still feel like a team that has one too many players. And they are also kind of heading towards salary cap hell with an upcoming Murray extension looming. So we'll have to see how that one works out. But Trey Young stuff continues to get beat up. Next up, the 2020 guys, Lamelo and Edwards. Uh, Lamelo, I've never been on Team Lamelo. That team's a disaster. I don't see them getting much better this offseason. And then he was hurt on and off most of last season. I don't think this card has any near-term future spiking to the moon. His PSA 10 silver is down to $400. And do keep in mind, uh, his is, I don't want to call it pop controlled, but there is a printing issue on that card. The PSA 10 population on his silver prism is only at 267, which is extremely low. Ant Edwards, for comparison, is almost at 1200. Uh, his PSA 10 currently sits at 525. He looks like the much more talented player. It's intriguing kind of tracking his prices with Jaw. And with Zion, and I will be curious to see where Palo's prices come in once PSA 10s of him start hitting the market. Raw's right now on Palo are sitting at around, I think it was like 140, 150, 130, kind of give or take. I took a quick glance at them, not included in the charts and graphs on today's video. But once again, Lamelo down 45% over the last 90 days. Not surprising. I think that one's got room to keep going. Edwards down slightly at 10%. Uh, that team seems a little messy as well. The Rudy Gobert thing may or may not actually be working out quite so well for them. We'll see if they shake things up in the offseason. I'm sure Cat's name will get floated in rumors. We'll see if anything gets moved there. Let's head into some guys currently playing and some more established players that actually have some bona fides. Devin Booker uh, up 20%. Just had an absolutely amazing game on Sunday. One of the best third quarters I've seen in an NBA playoff game in a while. Uh, him and Durant and Joker just going back and forth, throwing haymakers at each other. 
his stuff is up slightly. One thing to keep in mind with these guys, especially when you look at these prices, pop counts are pretty low on this stuff. His Silver Prism in a PSA 10 is only pop 200. So that's why that kind of sits at that 1.2K price. Joker, I went with PSA 10 and PSA 9 because a PSA 10 is not sold in a couple of weeks. Uh, so I wanted to be semi-fair to him. His PSA 9 is down 13%. PSA 10 is down 20%. Once again, uh, it's been about two weeks since one has sold. He obviously lost out on the MVP, and now he is dueling with Phoenix. If they can get past Phoenix, they'll have a decently tough matchup next round, but I just really like their chances against whoever they have to play. Uh, I don't know if Phoenix can hold up in with two games to go in Denver. Just the amount of minutes that they're putting on those two guys in the every other day nature of this series. And then basically the same thing for the Warriors and the Lakers having to play every other day. I assume, I, I assume the Western Conference Finals are every other day as well. Every other day games and then going back and forth to the altitude of Denver seems like a pain, especially for the Lakers. Uh, the, the Lakers probably actually match up slightly better because they have the bigs to be able to throw at Joker. But I like them coming out of the West. I've been saying that since before the season started. I'm going to stick to that. In B, your recent MVP winner. Prices up about 4%, 1000 bucks for a PSA 10 Prism Silver of him. Very low pop on this card. Only 81. This is a 2014 Silver Prism. Considering his accolades now that he has an MVP, we'll see if he can put things together. That seems reasonable-ish, given what he's done in the population count. I don't think they get past Boston, even though Boston seems a little train wrecky in fourth quarters. And Bede looks a little tired coming off that knee injury. He is battling through it. Uh, Harden's actually been carrying them the last the, their two wins so far. We'll see if he can keep that going. Unfortunate with the Embiid knee injury, and that's always kind of been, been the thing with him. And that is also probably what keeps his prices constrained a little bit. Next up, Giannis. Put him in a category by himself. We're looking at base prisms here, and that's why, because his, his silver prism is astronomically priced even now, and they rarely transact. 2013 prism, PSA 10 base, popped just under 3,000 on this, which is pretty low considering it's base. Sitting at 1.1K, 1.15K. PSA 9 sitting at 350. The PSA 9's down 27%. PSA 10 is actually basically holding flat at around 5%. So not panic selling the PSA 10 yet. We will see if that lasts. Maybe if you want to get in on a Giannis dip, maybe look at PSA 9s. Might not be a bad thing to sneak into. And you get in at a little bit of a lower price point. Pressure is on the Bucks. They have a very... Important offseason coming with lots of questions to answer after just letting their coach go. Next up, the two best players in the league currently in regards to accolades, awards, greatness factor, whatever you want to call it. And they are going currently head to head against each other in what has been a very entertaining series. LeBron and Curry. Start with Curry first. I went with this 2009 Topps paper base just because it had the most transactions. That card is up 38%. LeBron stuff, basically flat on a PSA 10 level. His PSA 10 tops Chrome now sitting at $6,000. That's wild times when you think about what that card was selling for at one point. Is flat at around 5%, 6% up. PSA 9 dipping a little bit harder, down 26% uh, with sales within days of each other on that. Down to 1.3K. That PSA 9 is getting pretty, pretty enticing. Uh... I moved off my PSA 8 like a year and a half ago at trade value of, I think, what that PSA 9 is going for now. So LeBron stuff has definitely come down quite a bit, obviously from the all-time peaks, but even since then it has continued to go down. This series could spin these two cards in opposite directions, uh, whoever ends up coming out of this one. If either one of these guys can end up getting to another finals and win another one, that would be absolutely massive for them legacy wise card price wise i don't know that it would actually move the needle that much um they would probably get a little bit of bump ups on the run but it i don't know that it would actually shift things like lebron psa 10 is not going back to twelve thousand dollars if he wins a title this year like that's just not the way that it works anymore 
Finally, not one specific player, but I did just want to kind of pull up the chart because a lot of guys that we looked at were going down. Uh, and I just kind of wanted to point this out. Uh, what I did here, this is usually my research method for a lot of this stuff. This is basketball PSA 10 Prism Silvers. Over the last 60 days, sorted by what has gone up the most. Spoilers, not much. Uh, Jamal Murray is number one at $136. Then you have Booker at $130. Fox at $75. Cats up. Josh Giddy, McDaniels. Jalen Brunson, not surprising. He could have easily made the earlier list that we talked about. And beat up slightly. Kuzma, Siakam, White. Aiton, Brogdon. I'm, I'm skipping over some guys here. RJ Barrett. But what, what do you notice very quickly here? Just 20 cards deep, we're only up $12.50. If I reverse this list, it's not that pretty. So not that much NBA-wise has crept up at all. Really, your big winners probably have actually established relevant players are Fox, Brunson, and potentially Booker, if they can win this series, we'll see. Really, in my opinion, Fox and Brunson are the two biggest winners so far of the NBA playoffs. Fox just kind of reestablishing himself as someone that was once a very trendy player and kind of lost the luster for a little bit. Uh, and Brunson just coming out of the woodwork. Obviously, he kind of did that last year, but once again, kind of establishing himself as uh, it wasn't a fluke the last few years in the playoffs. So that's the modern NBA kind of, you know, down and dirty recap of kind of what's been going on over the last 60, 90 days. Not pretty at all. Will we hit the bottom anytime soon? Nobody knows for sure, but I am sure people in the comment section have already said we got 60, 70, 80, 90% more to go. The end is near. Doom and gloom forever. Catch boys and girls on the next one. Peace.